It is The Riot on Radio U. Uh, this is our podcast, and uh, it's where we collect the um, bits from the, uh, the, the best day. best bits. Where we've been doing Despite the our title uh, of worst. talking, <laughs> and uh, where we... Uh, um, uh, Pay attention. Okay, let's focus. <laughs> uh, today in the podcast, we're talking about Burnout Paradise, Exploding Whales. Oh, please watch the video. I forgot we posted it, right? Oh, it's there. If you go to Radio You Ride on Facebook, I know. It's the thing you'll ever see. I know if you're like, oh, I hear what they're saying, but I'll go later, and then you never do. No, please you don't know. go watch this video. You don't it's know. great. <laughs> we got a KFC crisis update. Nikki's on the digital bits. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, Hobby Lobby, crosswalks. Eric knows a lot. About, about Magnum, Magnum P.I. They've announced who Magnum P.I., uh, who's the new person who will be playing that character. The actor. In the reboot for performer. CBS's, yes, of Magnum P.I., and so we'll go over that. All right. Well, you guys enjoy the podcast. Remember to stop by, as we said, watch our Exploding Whale video. Uh, and if you want <laughs> to say ours, hi. We're just linking well, it. We're linking to it, but still. <laughs> that's Radio U Riot on Facebook. If you want to find the rest of our social media outlets, We've got them all listed at riot.radiou.com. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Ding. <laughs> the Riot talks about wanting a day off, but when do we get a day off from this? Whoa, you suck at this. It's the worst of The Riot on Radio U. You know, I was going to wait until later in the show for this, but uh, I've got Jerome messaging me on Facebook saying, hey, did you see that? <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and get it out might there as, right now. Might as well message it. And don't forget, um, you can message us at Radio U Riot on Facebook, so you might as well bring it up. So Burnout Paradise, possibly the single greatest racing game of all time. Of all time! Was that the one where there was something where you got a license or something like that? Yeah, or? that's right. That's you got to get your burnout license. Yeah. It was a big open world racer when there wasn't any such thing. And you'd go up to different traffic lights and then you just hold on the brake and then hit the accelerator and eventually a race would start. And it's the one where, you know, burnout takedowns. So you slam into people. And I can't remember if Burnout Paradise did this or not, but the deal with burnout used to be is that you would make somebody wreck and it would slow down and pan. You get that slow motion pan of the wreck as they'd wipe out and then you keep driving. Dude. And, okay, I know I'm like fanning out a little bit here but uh the other thing is that they have all these great online challenges so that's something that me and i don't remember if eric was in that mix or not but and a few other people you would get together online on xbox live and it would be stuff like okay all four of you have to jump through this hoop and so literally you would have to find this construction site where they had a big thing and you would have to take like hit this ramp just right to make it through this thing and if everybody did it and like corkscrewed through it, yeah. you would get an achievement for it. Look, the game is team building and friendship building. It, it was a ton <laughs> of fun, dude. Was it coming back? Or? It is. Like they are releasing Burnout Paradise Remastered. It's coming to the piece. No, I guess it's coming to the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 because I think if you have it on the PC, you might already have the remaster. Uh, but they're saying if you got a PlayStation 4 and an X or the PlayStation 4 Pro and the Xbox One X, it will run natively in 4K with Aww. 60 frames per second. Look, the burnout stuff will look better. That's, that's the magic mark. When you go for those past things. the wreckage from everybody else, it'll look good. Okay, so let's see here. It'll be available this year on Origin for PC. Okay, so I guess it is. Um, it's going to be 40 bucks. Um, let's see. It'll be available on EA Access starting on, wait for it, March 9th. And then it will go to everybody else on March 16th. All right. So. There you go. Dude, that is, that's some great stuff. Makes me want to go on home and play, you know, the copy I already have. The original? No, 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 no. They want you to get the new one. Well, the nice thing, too, though, is it's going to come with all the DLC, and that includes, like, the burnout bikes, and I had a list, but I don't remember what else is in it. But, dude, like, there's... There's so much there. Well, Jerome, and thank is, you for sending it, and it seems like Obi's excited. It's such a good game. <laughs> He's oh very much gosh, looking forward to it. It's such a good game. It's so fun, dude. I am, yes, I am playing that. The Riot with Obadiah. Them honey buns and Cheetos done caught up with. The Riot with Nikki. Yeah, she's a liar, because I don't know her. So whatever, whatever she says is a lie, so. The Riot, Radio U. Okay. We talk about a lot of gross stuff, and it's funny how I'm just like, ha ah, whatever, 
But this, to me, I feel <laughs> Did like... you find something is, that's too much? Yeah, but I feel like it just goes to show you that, like, I have, for whatever reason, this grosses me <laughs> out, even though it's not, like, that gross. I just didn't know you had a line where you I, drew the line in the sand. So there's a blue, a dead blue whale that is washed up on the shore in uh, South America, yeah. in Chile. And here, all these beachgoers are climbing on top of it to get their picture taken, are carving their initials in it. Oh, it I'm telling you, dude, I don't There's, know what it is. How can you do the, that? The idea of some enormous dead whale and I'm going to climb all over it for good times? No. No. No, no. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm out. Oh, people really are carving their names in it. There and then is taking, something you know, taking pictures with it. So gross about the idea of climbing on top of a dead whale. And I'm just like, bro. Maybe you're still no. in the, the window. The window before everything starts to go. It doesn't no, I don't need to me it doesn't matter. If I'm still in the window, for all I know, it's gonna roll over and be like oh. And you're like, Oh, it won't eat you. It just has you know, gums and those baleen for stringing the <laughs> fish something. I, a lot of local residents are obviously very upset. They're saying that people nowadays do not respect anything since the creature died. You're not showing respect to its body. Well, it's not a person. Oh, okay? they're claiming like, that some people are even kicking the dead whale as it lays on the beach. Yeah, okay. That feels like an ancient martial arts training and thing. Kicking it like, while it's down. <laughs> I'll take you to the beach and you will kick the whale all day until your legs are stretched. Strong as whale. I, I mean, I can't guarantee that's what will happen, but that's what it feels like. I mean, I, I don't feel like we need to have a funeral for the whale. No, you know? but I mean, you don't have to kick the thing. It's dead. You don't have to carve your name in it. Mm, I just think it's gross. Like, there's something about being on top of a dead whale that grosses me out. But I will tell you, one person's going to learn a very valuable lesson. What's that? Well, they're going to be the one to poke the whale at the right moment when it explodes all over it. That's right. So just want, it's a roll of the dice. <laughs> the skin rots and then yeah. all that gas that's been trapped in under there and then... Like, poof. just enough. And you're like, hey, I'm going to put my name Obadiah. And then they start that off and then it just Oh my explodes. gosh! <laughs> what just happened? And then you learned your lesson. Doesn't seem like a very good idea, dude. I don't like... I, mean, I, I don't want to try it. I guess they're going to try to drag its body back into the water or something, something. A lot of times what they'll do is they'll cut it up uh, because they, they it's just too heavy to move. They can't get it back out into the water because sometimes it'll just keep washing back up on shore, and so they'll literally go out there like with chainsaws, cut it up, put it on the backs of uh, like large trucks, and, and have to it. ship the whale carcass out. Can you imagine, There's, like, hey Bob, what are we doing today? Well, we got a project at the beach. <laughs> well, if you want to see a great whale dead oh, whale story, it's a classic. Uh, well, there, I was thinking too. There is the one where they tried to just use dynamite to blow it up. That's a great one. But then another one is where they put it on like the back of a truck, got it into downtown, <laughs> and then all of the then, gas. Then it really did explode. It, the gas that it built up in the decaying whale caused it to explode. <laughs> you know what? Ooh. I think I need to pull that one up again. <laughs> I think we need to watch that one. <laughs> Maybe you're right. <laughs> Starting your day with the worst of the riot is a great idea because it's guaranteed to get better from here. <laughs> it's the riot on Radio U. Just a heads up, like if you feel like you need to scream or run in terror or something like that, we found the best video on we the whole internet. We were talking about the whale, the disappointing thing where the local residents were taking pictures and was it chilly where the yes washed mm-hmm. up. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whale has been, uh, they're graffitiing it where they're writing their names on it. And so we were explaining, well, it's only a matter of time before the dead body just blows. And now we're watching co- a compilation of exploding whales. <laughs> it's bad. All the right. gas builds up so much. So it's just so violent of an explosion <laughs> when the they thing, do that. The thing that gets me is like their guts blow everywhere. And I mean, like it is a, Nikki's right. It's a violent explosion. And then it's like, you'll just see where it's still just like, <sighs> like, like they're stuck There's just fluttering. In there. Like it's still making its way out. <laughs> it's so gross. Uh, Which is why I posted it on the riots, Facebook page. And you can see it's all the of the gross where you need whales. to watch with us. No, you need to see it guys. <laughs> 
You need to see it. It is crazy. So if you go to Radio You Ride on Facebook, let's just have some fun today, okay? Just wherever you're going or before you go, take a moment to just pull that up and watch it. You need to see the exploding whale. Like, oh. you need to see... <laughs> you see now to the side, there's other, like, weird explosions. So we have a whole list that we can watch. Some other stuff that you can look for is Nikki found a... <laughs> A guy smoking a pipe. What? No, he's wearing the yellow yes. Gordon's Fisherman's outfit. And then he's got even, I think he even had like a little beard he's got thing like a going beard on. beard and a pipe. And he's casually poking with a spear at the, the whale. Hey, I'll tell you right now. If you got me poking at the guts of a dead whale, give me a pipe. I want, <laughs> I want the smoke from that pipe going up my nose and hopefully <laughs> somehow. I don't think he was smoking it. I think it was just for show. You think so? Well, look at it. You think he's, mean, just a ta- he's just a townsperson that's like, I want to get no, in on the action? He's being what we expect him to be. Like, he's just fulfilling that role. Somebody needs to. Of the local um, fisherman who is taking a spear and just destroying the whale. Okay. How about this? If you saw a guy out there in a business suit, you know, and or like in his jogging clothes, and he's he's got a big... Uh, knife and he's hacking away at the whale you'd be like i'm calling the police like, what do you think what you're doing? are you doing sir this guy puts on his yellow rain slicker with yeah, a pipe and you're like no, well I'm... he's supposed to be doing that he's obviously a fisherman he looks like a fisherman but the problem is if i was a fisherman i'd be like you know what let me put down my pipe <laughs> this seems to be a big no, thing i'm telling you i think the pipe is there because it smells so bad that's why fishermen are all piped up they're trying to stay away from this fish smell it's like a vaping rig. <laughs> Give me something from the South Farthing instead of this stupid. So please take a moment and watch. Oh yeah, you should watch Obviously. the exploding whales. Who wouldn't? Who doesn't want to see exploding whales? And then the rest Put of the day, down. when you're called into that meeting or you have that class, and you you normally are a little sad. In your mind, you're going to think back and just picture exploding whales. Just like you know what, Bob. All I'm saying is I'm a whale, okay? That's what I'm saying. And if you keep poking the whale, you're I'm not going to be happy explode. with what I'm not even going to be responsible for what happens if you keep poking the whale. One of the only things left that isn't owned by Disney. The Riot on Radio U. Have you guys ever lived in the United States for a while? For Christmas? For the stuff? Yeah. And what do you guys hear? The big fight that happens every year at Christmas. There's a war on Christmas. Oh, when people stop calling it Christmas. When you you gotta call it Christmas. You gotta this. If you say happy holidays, then man, you're anti Christmas. Which is funny because I've said happy holidays for years and I thought that meant like Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Yeah, it was a combination of both. I thought it was the same thing. I didn't know that I was, you know, being some kind of a spoke in the wheel of the cultural revolution. I don't know, whatever. But um, you got to say Merry Christmas now. You better. You better. Um, so did you know that they're experiencing that same thing in China, but about something else? For the new year? Or what, are they, what, what are they shorting oh, it to? yeah, Nikki. See, now you and I were just like, what? <laughs> I will say. What else would you call it? This year, my favorite video game retailer, Steam, they had a Lunar New Year sale. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I don't even know what that is, but great, sale. <laughs> and I had some gift cards, and that's, I bought... That's I, all you cared about. You know what? I bought a game. Yeah. And I'm proud of myself, because I, le- I left money on the table. The the full name, isn't it, with it still as Chinese New Year? Well, here's the thing, Nikki. They're the same. Yeah. Uh-huh. So wait, you can't just Cri- call it one? Christmas versus holiday. Ah, uh, so which is the right one? Oh. Is there? No, you're right. Which is the traditional is one there, or the you new see? one? Like, I don't it's, know how to say it. Well, it's just fascinating to me because, you know, you explain our Merry Christmas thing to people in a different country, and they're probably going to be like, "What? why do you even care? And here we have in China, Chinese New Year. Well, they want it to be Chinese New Year everywhere. Well, this I did not know. Plenty of other countries in Asia use that Lunar New Year calendar. So they're saying, hey, Lunar Year is just a calendar. You don't get to call it Chinese Year. This is Korea. Yeah. Lunar New Year. But people in China are like, no this way. is Christmas. <laughs> so they're calling it. Keep the it... Chinese in Chinese New Year. Well, that makes sense then, because when you started saying Lunar New Year, it was like, wait, it's more Chinese New Year, but it is all the same thing. I can honestly say that I look at enough retail sites that apparently do things internationally that they were all saying Lunar New Year this year. And I didn't know that Lunar New Year and Chinese New Year were, I'm sorry, from our perspective, the same thing. 
and that that was literally in Asia. That is the politically correct, quote unquote, way to wish someone a happy Chinese New Year. So the I was reading it's common or what is becoming common is like, hey, if you you are in China and you're Chinese, people will say happy Chinese New Year. But to someone from another country, they will say happy Lunar, Lunar New, New Year. Year. Mm. That is also considered selling out by a lot of people in China. But as someone who works on holiday stuff, we realize you can't have a graphic for everything. So I think they probably just put Lunar New Year, and that's where people are getting mad. That's what Steam had. But you know, Nikki, Steam doesn't even have a holiday sale. They have a winter sale. Well, they're like, just me- they're for, messing up everywhere, aren't for they? For Christmas and New Year's, they're like, <laughs> it's the Steam winter sale. How dare they? <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? Just give me the deals. Just say sale. Just say, here's our sale right now. Nope. Sale. <laughs> nope. So uh, this has come to the forefront for me because apparently there is a Chinese actress who wished everybody a happy Lunar New Year, and the world fell apart. Oh, that was too much. So she ended up changing it. I think it was on Instagram and made it happy Chinese New Year and... You know, now people are okay. Want to know what the riot is doing right now? Follow them on Instagram and Twitter at riot.radiou.com. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. A nation in crisis as the UK struggles to find the chicken it needs to live the lifestyle it so desires. I'm Obadiah with this KFC update. In the UK right now, KFCs everywhere are closed. With for as of, another day. For another day. <laughs> half the KFCs in the UK are closed because they couldn't get their chicken. So apparently KFC went from moving from a food specialist distribution company mm-hmm. to DHL. Mm-hmm. And they were warned, Obi. They were warned. They Tell, were warned. Nikki, I want you to read the warning from this food distribution <laughs> network before they went. <laughs> the GMV union warned KFC about the risk of transferring the distribution from... Um, this one company to DHL. They said that we tried to warn KFC this decision would have consequences. Well, now the chickens have come home to roost. Oh, except they haven't come home to roost because there's no chickens they are, around. No, they're there. in the uh, the delivery thing. So what they're saying is that <laughs> DHL had a computer failure of some kind that has caused all of this chicken to just sit in the in warehouses. warehouses. So who wants to go to KFC since the chicken's been sitting in the warehouse for days? They're going to have to throw that all out. I mean, it's not like you can sell that chicken or deliver it. It, It's not like it's been in an air-conditioned area. Well, if you cook it, doesn't that Uh, cook out? I don't think it cooks out. Can't cook out? I don't think this much. Are you sure? Like, do I get a little sick or a lot if I eat this? Like, how much? (laughs) Because, I mean, like, day off or days off. (laughs) You know, because, like, if I, maybe I eat it on a Sunday night, I don't want to go in on Monday. You got Mm -hmm. an excuse. Am I lucky to get back by Thursday, though? That's what I need to know. Is there an update? Are they still just letting people know that KFC, they had to close down maybe six or 800 of their locations (laughs) because they don't have chicken? (laughs) The best... The best oh, thing. Oh, the line from the lady. In all of this. Let me see if I can find her. This lady. Oh, here's the little girl like that is ranting. She's like, I am mad at them. Because <laughs> she wants KFC. No. Here you, here you go. <laughs> I should have had this ready. Absolutely good. No, listen. Well, will I get a free rice box then coming down? Because I've been trying. I've, tra- I've had to go to Burger King. <laughs> I've That's had to I've go had. to Burger King. I've had to go to Burger King. <laughs> I've had, and then she goes on to say, like, I've done? only been to Burger King twice in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and she had to go because KFC's been closed. So it was more than half of their 900 stores are still remaining closed. I just look at that and it's like, you know, there are other restaurants. <laughs> you don't even have to go to fast food. You can go home. Go home and make yourself a fish and chip or something. Nope, like, apparently what are you not. Doing? She I, had I've to had, go. I've had to go to Burger King. <laughs> I've only been to Burger King twice in my life. Wow. So Burger King's really excited. but mm, To I'll be sorry, included in this. The riot will continue to monitor this nation in crisis. I'll tell you what, though. Be worried if your grocery store has this big sale Discount on chicken. chicken. Because you know where that's coming from. You know where it's coming like, from. Is this the DHL chicken? Dude, no. It'll be like, hey, uh, it's this new British chicken we're trying. It's really exciting. Yeah, they bring it over. 
from the UK. We and, get it? Yeah, you know, it's fantastic. Well, you know, and it's half off today only. Tomorrow's 75% off, but today it's 50%. You should try it. Well, get it now before they sell it to Burger King. Hey, why do you guys have a Pepto display right next to the chicken? I don't know. Do you have any at home? Maybe you should pick it up, too. Wish the worst of the riot would never end. Everything that has a beginning has an end. What is wrong with you? Get our daily podcast through iTunes, Google Play, or the Radio U app. You gotta say what's up to Izzy, I think in Santa Rosa. Um, Izzy is texting us this morning, showing us the McDonald's where they work. Has the Szechuan sauce. Now, they're so, not allowed to put it out yet. Oh, okay. So, it's just in cases or whatever? Yeah. So, at least the picture is of cases. And here's what I found out. I checked McDonald's official Twitter account, and it says this. We heard you and have been working tirelessly to bring back the sauce. More of the sauce. On 222, that's tomorrow, we announce when and where Szechuan sauce will return but also ending the answer the burning question, what happened to the sauce? Well, last year, Rick and Morty, which is a very popular show, they cover Szechuan sauce, which was a dipping sauce McDonald's had years ago, a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And they brought it back, but they didn't bring enough back. And so fans got really mad. It was <laughs> crazy. To say they didn't bring enough back is to be nice about an insane situation. Like you're talking hundreds were lining up to get the Szechuan sauce and they'd have like 10 packs. And then they were still having people line up, even though they only had that many. So it was a mess, and McDonald's kind of got um, railed on for that. And are you, bl- are you okay? Is just it- keep going. Oh. I'm fine. <laughs> it's just a mess over I'm there. I'm fine. Just keep You're going. Fine. You're Big fine. Big sneeze, nose blowing. I'm still happy. I'm so. I'm just upset about the sauce. So McDonald's said, "All right, we're going to come back and try it again." Um, so I guess now they're ready with more of the Szechuan sauce. Yeah. This box that Izzy sent us a text of yeah. seems like more Szechuan sauce than they had when they released it last year. Than the entire. So I think they have more. All right, so let's do some math here. If this box is only what we can see, we got one, two, three, four, it five, six, like seven by five. That looks like there's about... 35 packs, but... It looks like there's a layer underneath I was going to say, it looks yeah. like there may be multiple layers underneath. So, still, as Nikki said, 35 is more than, like, <laughs> the 10. <laughs> they had. Oh, my gosh. I, You know what? Here's my guess. Is McDonald's was like, tomorrow we'll ter- tell you when and where. I think tomorrow they'll come out and say, when is everywhere, mm-hmm. and wh- or where is everywhere, and, and when, when is, is now. Right now. That's hard to say. I really liked the Big Mac Sriracha dipping sauce that they had, uh-huh. too. I don't think they still have it, but I think they should have just Big Mac sauce in a dipping little mm-hmm. to-go container mm-hmm. for nuggets. And then if you need the Szechuan sauce, sure, let's do that one, too. I'll tell you what I'm probably going to do. I don't, like, I haven't had a McNugget in a while. And, About time. you know, sweet and sour is my go-to. But I feel like tomorrow you could drag me out for a McNugget and a Szechuan. Let's do it. All right. Oh, look, he's saying four layers. So four layers, and I'm counting maybe 35 on the top. Let's do that's some That's 140. Math. That's a lot of sauce packets. That, that's, we're getting somewhere on that. And that's just one box. Who knows how many they're delivering? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, fingers crossed. And Izzy, have a great day at McDonald's. I want you to eat a, um, what do you want him to eat for us, Nikki? Uh, nuggets. How much? No, I yeah, eat some nuggets, but also just fresh ones. I was just thinking a uh, McGriddle, like have a McGriddle now, I only like and the then chi- have some McNuggets on the way out. The chicken McGriddle. Oh, what if you made a McGriddle with nuggets? You yeah. just had to put a little layer. Come on. Oh gosh, it's getting real in here. <laughs> That's how you should do it. I mean, well, you- if you're a fan, and again, you were mad about the Szechuan sauce last year for McDonald's. Um, it should be tomorrow then. It's not McDonald's fans; it's Rick and Morty fans. They got to deal with. It's not like somebody was like, I don't know what Rick and Morty is, but I got to have that Szechuan. You're right. It was just because of the show. It's the worst of the riot because calling it the best of the riot would be a lie. Radio U. Okay, I'm going to have to host an intervention now. What? I'm just watching an old movie trailer. Tell them. No, I don't want to. I don't want to promote the old movie, but it's bad. Tell them, Nikki. Why? 
Why? Nikki's watching a movie about conjoined twins no. that were separated it, by a doctor, but one of them's kept in a basket. <laughs> what? Because they're going after the guy, and they're on a, a rampage, and it's an old 80s thing. And I was looking at digital bits, and it was like, wow, what, what is that? Like, it looks so bad. So then uh, I, I watched the trailer, and it's mm-hmm. really bad. See, I'm just going to click out then. The thing that I don't understand, though, Nikki, is like, uh, I mean, were we not keeping you entertained enough that you were already at the digital bits? What? The digital bits is Nikki and I's last stop on the internet. It's, it's only like Wednesday. When, when everything <laughs> is gone and there's nothing left, we no, will go just, look at the upcoming releases on digital bits. No, I was just thinking about it. I was like, oh, yeah, I wonder if anything else has come out good. And then that's that's one of the options. All right. Well, here's some of the options just, you know, just to keep it official. I'm looking here. Daddy's Home 2 came out yesterday. That's what, not what drove me to look, but okay. The Star uh-huh. came out yesterday. The Story of the First Christmas. I've never even heard of that. That was cute. I, I saw it, it. I actually heard it was a good movie. Um, and let's see. Uh, that's about it. You're not going to recognize. Nobody's going to recognize. Well, the I'm, I'm already stuff. into like March, April releases, so yeah. I'm further along. Murder on the Orient Express. I wanted to see that. Did you see that? I did not. If I had had a movie pass, I probably would have. Oh, there it is. Basket Case. Ew. Ew. It's so bad. But there's this one part in the trailer where (laughs) the guy opens up. Yeah, but guys. No, but wait. But he opens up a packet of hot dogs and he's throwing it into the basket. He's feeding his brother. I was like, that's hot dogs. Hey, you know what? I won't, like, I like I won't watch look, anymore. I like hot dogs. Mm-hmm. I do. Just like, what's in the... And then everybody in the trailer is like, what's in the basket? And that made me think of what was the Brad Pitt movie? What's in the box? 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 In the box? And now we're, we're back to this. <laughs> yeah. So, well, that's... It's something. I, I feel like I need a break. <laughs> Go get a water or something, or some more it's coffee. It's getting hot in here. You want to open a window? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> a lot of a lot of really gross stuff floating around. But you know, I could still keep looking at digital bits to see if there's anything else I need to see. If you were offended or disgusted by anything Obadiah said this morning, if you weren't so dumb, I might be offended. <laughs> you must be new. You'll get used to it. The riot on Radio, on Radio U. 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 Some people out there want to say hurtful things. About, I'm not saying, not about us. It's not us, but they want to say hurtful things about people, you know, people like Batman. <laughs> I don't know if you heard about Batman, Nikki. He was a part of a movie that came out late last year. Justice League? It was called The Justice League. Mm-hmm. Like, just as if I'd never leagued kind of thing. Yes, we remember it. Okay, it's about to come out on Blu ray. Nobody's talking about it, nobody cares. And here's the sad and hurtful things is that people are showing how uh, over the weekend in four days, Black Panther was able to make the more. same amount of money. Well, you're right. More, yeah, more than Justice League made. And it's an entire theatrical run. But that's run. not fair. I mean, that's that's. See, you well, could say that about any movie. You defending the Batfleck? No. Are you standing up for Ben? I'm not. OK, but I'm just saying any movie that came out last year, except for a couple. <laughs> Could fall under that same category. Well, that's not entirely true. Like Justice League made some money. Yeah, but all the other movies. Well, you know, people and stuff, Nikki. It's so hard I feel out like there. that's being a little harsh towards Justice League. Oh, you, you give it give it another chance. Well, no, not to watch it. All that we're <laughs> saying is give Justice League a chance. I thought the trailer for that movie looked good, and I'm sure people are just hating on it a little bit more than they needed to. Well, it's become DC. Unfortunately, has become. You know, that thing that people like to talk about not liking. There's also the fact that not all their movies are great. Wonder Woman was a breakout hit for them. Well, I call it a breakout hit. It did well. It was still not Marvel. Yeah. And I will tell you, like, I'm not saying it's a bad movie, but it feels like an okay Marvel movie versus it being an amazing Marvel, Marvel movie, movie. Like, say, I don't know, Black Panther. Mm-hmm. That made Justice League money in less than four days. True. But yes, I keep seeing that that around in articles. I'm like, guys, just leave it alone. I, okay? see, hurt, I see hurtful memes. <laughs> hurtful memes. I think it's only because it's coming out now, you know, on digital release. And it'll be out soon on Blu-ray. It's just fresh in people's mind to make fun of. I think people like 
poking fun at the DC movies. So is Ben Affleck doing Batman anymore, or is he done with that? He's like, I'm out. I feel like he ruined... Well, he didn't ruin it, but he did not help Justice League's release last fall. What do you mean with all well, the... with all the press stuff and... The gropings and the... All the, the stuff. Alleged zings. It did not help it, I don't it think. I don't think that's what... To me, I think you can literally go back, if you want to see... If you want to see the moment where Ben Affleck was done being Batman, I want you to Google the Batman v Superman interview (laughs) where Ben Affleck first finds out about the reviews. It's the first time he's heard that it's not going well. All you have to do is Google sad Affleck. (laughs) And I'm telling you right now, you'll see the moment it all started when he was done with Batman. Yeah, it all cracks. Because I think up until that moment... He thought that they had really turned out a killer product. And again, you can argue that maybe it is. But uh, when he found out that people didn't like it, he was pretty much done. I've also seen a couple of where people are asking him about it, and he's literally like, could you stop asking me about Batman? (laughs) You're like, wow, you feel like Batman right now. (laughs) It's very intense. Whoa! But remember, um, it did not make, I mean, Black Panther's made more, if that's the one thing we're learning today. It's made a lot. They're saying Black Panther is a cultural moment. Justice League was a cultural moment, but it was one where everybody was like, hey, I want to be the next one to throw a rock at it. Send your complaints regarding that worst of the riot moment to fire Obadiah at RadioU.com. Nikki, when's the last time you made it over to Hobby Lobby? Hobby Lobby? Yeah. Mm, not as often. What do you think about a lunchtime Hobby Lobby stop? Are you talking about the trend that's been oh, going yeah. on, the flower trend? Oh, yeah. We could use some new riot photos. We really could. <laughs> Basically, the trend that's been going around for a couple of weeks, I forget the hashtag that goes with it, but, you know, kind of... It's hashtag Hobby Lobby challenge. The challenge with it, it's almost like uh, like your senior portraits or something. You're going to take a more glamour shot. But you do it in the flower section of Hobby Lobby. So the challenge is to make it look as beautiful and as artistic without knowing this is done in literally the Hobby Lobby flower section. (laughs) And some of them look really good. Hobby Lobby challenge is just super annoying for employees because you're just in our way. (laughs) Well, no, I don't think it's crowded in that section. And if you're going to resituate the flowers, at least put them back. That's good, yeah. Mm -hmm. Clean up after your photo shoot. Uh, let's see. Hobby Lobby workers must be so tired of people coming in and pushing themselves into displays of plastic flowers. There's a lot. There's actually a lot here. Uh, the try not to get caught by Hobby Lobby workers challenge of 2018. This <laughs> girl, oh my gosh, that? this girl went in in like a prom dress and a tiara and you a can big... tell with like full makeup and stuff. You can tell when someone's going in for the challenge. I think the a better challenge would be us camped out. In the aisle, trying to get pictures of people trying to get pictures. <laughs> That's also good, Next too. level Hobby Lobby challenge. Still use the hashtag. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess it's better than the Tide Pod challenge, because at least you're not eating Tide Pods. Because I think as poison. a society, we should think, oh, this is a step up. Okay, we could all use some new profile pics. I actually bought some stuff at Hobby Lobby last Thanksgiving. Yeah, I bought uh, some superhero-themed things that I put on the wall in my basement, Mm -hmm. one of which is made of tin, and when the subwoofer fires, it rattles too much. (laughs) I kind of need to take it You need to figure that one out. Yeah, I've been thinking about it. Well, the challenge wasn't around then, but um, it's still there if you want to try to get your picture in with the uh, Hobby Lobby flowers. That is the challenge still. Don't think about it too hard, because at the end of the day, here's what you're going to realize. We're really bored. Okay, but the fact that we can be so bored, it's the fact that we live in such a great society. That's freedom right there. If you woke up this morning and you were like, I don't know where my next meal is coming from and I don't know if there's any clean water, you wouldn't be like, and I have to get over to Hobby Lobby (laughs) to get this picture. Now, our thing is I need my new Instagram pic. So you got to go do this. (laughs) So, I mean, in some ways, congratulations to the United States for being this far along in society. (laughs) Seeing our American dream. I could be, I don't know. With virtual reality, the possibilities are endless. It gives us the ability to live out any of our wildest dreams. So maybe we can use it to pretend the riot doesn't exist. The riot on Radio U. (laughs) Nikki, take a look at the statue of a thermostat we have on the wall. Yeah. (laughs) It's an art installation that looks like a thermostat. Sometimes we're not sure if it actually works. Only on the, like, it just gets so hot certain days. Yeah. And then you try to turn it down and it's not working. Well, you know, it's 
Like technically, it lights up. It's like you think it's going to start cooling things down, but you're just pushing buttons and it's going nowhere. You can push some buttons. You know, something seems to happen, but you know, whatever. You ever felt that way? I felt that way at crosswalks, especially like when I go out running and you're like, oh, you hit the button and you, you think have, you should cross the street. I hit the button. It's like, man, is this thing even plugged into anything? Nothing seems to be happening. I think it's just there to make you feel better, but really, the light's just going to turn and then it'll just switch it that way. All right. Well, I don't think it's rushing because you're there. Yeah. See, I don't think so either. But I love this. This is a story about San Francisco, and in it. They ha- oh my gosh they have twelve hundred signalized intersections they call them so yeah. in other places with a crosswalk with a signal only two hundred and fifty nine of them don't say it are actually connected well they may be connected but only two hundred and fifty nine of them change as a result of the button I just you're being lied to then so basically what is that like one fourth <laughs> of those. Any t- when you push the button, it makes Actually any difference working. at all? Well, at least it's a game. The, bu- the button's just there to give you something to do. It's like a game then. Find which ones are actually working. <laughs> it kind of is. I, you, for all I know, you might even be able to find a list. I don't know. But 941 intersections. don't The buttons don't do anything. Or at least they don't change the timing. Sure, which uh-huh. I kind of assume deep down anyways. Yeah, well, I mean, they're at not least changing I, the traffic pattern just because little old me wants to go across the street. Like, we're not doing that for me. At least now, you know. Also, just a heads up, they interview the, the traffic guys and they're like, hey, if you push the button more than once, does it help? No. Yeah, but it feels good. OK, so for, just- for example, <laughs> let's say that you go to one of the intersections where the button actually does impact the yeah. traffic signal. It still doesn't matter. One button press is the only thing that it registers. You do that at the elevator, too. You know, just to get it, you think, oh, I'll just keep pushing it. Oh, yeah. Just hammer on that button. I'm sure the elevator's <laughs> like, oh, my gosh, there's, they really oh, want to come they up. They really need me right now. I am coming down. We've got to hurry. <laughs> come on. But that's more to make you feel better. Like, it's it's coming. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Well, that's the case. So just a heads up. Basically, everything you think that you have control over it's all an illusion. Everything's a lie. Oh, everything? Well, okay, let's not say lie. It's just not how you think it is. Right. So, for example, you think this works. It doesn't work. <laughs> and no one ever it's said it did. not working how you think it should be. The Riot. They hate me. They hate you. They hate us. Why else would they make us listen to the worst of the riot? Radio U. Eric, you watched Magnum P.I. when you were a kid, right? Wasn't that a thing? Magnum P.I.? Like, watch Magnum reruns or whatever? I don't know about the future. What? I'm not sure about this. Okay, because oh, the they, reboot? they yeah. got the guy that's going to be the... It? Who is the guy? He was um, in Scandal and Jay Hernandez. Suicide Squad, maybe? There he is, dude. Jay Hernandez. Okay, in Suicide Squad, he was the fire guy. That guy. Okay. It's hard to recognize because in Suicide Squad, he's covered in tattoos and his head's shaved. Well, Why didn't guy. they keep that character for the Magnum P.I.? You anyway. know what? <laughs> his what? man card, <laughs> it looks like it's pending. Well, he... It's a man hair. He, but the thing the is... The mantle of Thomas Magnum is a mustache and chest hair. That guy looks like wax, wax, wax. He he is Eric is right. He's very clean shaven. Mm-hmm. But I mean, this is a photo from another show. We don't I, know. Like, I he, realize he's he in a character. Mustache. He's in a character. Yeah. I gotta tell you, uh, <laughs> the actor. <laughs> well, Tom, Tom Selleck. Selleck yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom Selleck. He wore that mustache for decades after yeah. that true. role. That's that was true. a Look. lifestyle. But do well, you think the new one would have a mustache or would it have more of like what's popular now, which would be a beard? Uh, maybe. Or do they have to have a mustache just as a nod to the original Magnum P.I.? I don't feel like mustaches are in enough I that, you, so that you lead your CBS drama with a mustachioed man. Unless it's set back in that time frame. But it's not It's not a it's period piece. Day? Yeah. Like Does he still get a Ferrari? He's gonna have, he He's going to have some good car. How about he has but a mustache gonna, and a Bugatti? And he's going to have something, he probably has something better than a Ferrari, because back in the day, like, a Ferrari was, was like... top. People hadn't even heard of Ferraris when the show was on. Everyone knows what a Ferrari is. They're going to have to find, like, the next something elite else. car sure. that's, like, some boutique brand and some... And does he have a, of, did he have a helicopter? Or like he did. He, he, he had a friend that had a helicopter. Man, man, I want that. And I want, you know the Ferrari wasn't even his. That was with the house he would stay at. Oh, I didn't know He didn't know actually that. have anything. 
He just stayed at the house because the owner of the house liked him. Okay. And the owner of the house wasn't the guy. I want to. How do I? I guess even, I didn't even realize fall into that. that? Yeah. Like well, I want to. You. We'll it was, see. This is kind of vagabond character. So, is there enough crime on Hawaii that you can? Be a um, successful private probably, investigator? Probably so. Okay. All right. So I guess we'll see what they do with that. When is the Magnum P.I.? Because, again, they just were announcing they found the guy who's going to be the I Magnum P.I. I think Magnum it's going to be character. this fall, right? That's what I think it's going to be. Okay. Like this fall. Only we also, on CBS. Hey, Eric, we found out that an old movie Tom Selleck was in. Uh, Tom <laughs> don't Selleck, say it. You don't want to say it? It's so bad. I'll show you <laughs> later. You're the is Hawaii yeah. Five O still on? Hawaii yeah. Five O? It's still on, it's even still on though they lost their... Remember those two actors left because they said yeah. they were underpaid because they were Asian. Uh, it was uh, Grace Park from Battlestar Galactica yeah. and the guy from Lost. And they both yeah. left, but Hawaii Five O still on. In fact, they probably have Hawaii Five O West Island but or see, something this is by what, now. No, this was going to happen. Hawaii Five O is probably on its way out soon, but they still have all the set stuff. So it's just and please stay in Hawaii? So just stay in Hawaii, just keep the production team, and then move right on into Magna P.I. Fun fact, Magna P.I. was originally written to be in Long Beach, California, but because Hawaii Five O had recently canceled, they decided to keep the production filled sillies in Hawaii running by setting Magna P.I. in Hawaii. Just it's right happening now. again! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Why do you know all this old Magnum P.I. random stuff? That is like Battlestar right there. It's <laughs> happened before and it will happen, happen again. again. That's how it is. It's how TV happens. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, Eric, you know a lot about Magnum P.I. <laughs> Way more than we That's thought. That's amazing. I just, I'll just tell you right now. Eric's definitely coming back to discuss the pilot when Once they it's air on? it. Because right. I need our resident Magnum P.I. guy to tell me what it looks like. This was the worst of the riots, and we'd like to congratulate you on having the stomach to stick around to the very end. The riot exists because Radio U exists, and Radio U only exists because of your support. Find out more and give now at RadioU.com slash donate. Nikki and I are in the middle of a throat clearing party.